students, welcome to exam-based, a uh, contact-based presentation for designing technology. Um, my name is Mr. Mukai Nyangar. I'm the tutor for this uh, subject. The objectives of this uh, presentation, uh, the intention is to remind students about important issues uh, when writing uh, examinations. The second objective is to help students uh, identify resources uh, which you need to consult to prepare for the examinations. Uh, it is also intended to remind you to complete personal information correctly when you are writing examinations. It is also intended to help you uh, to follow instructions at the beginning of the question paper correctly. Uh, the presentation is also meant to summarize the course content, the topics covered by the course. Also, the presentation intends to explain and discuss some of the key questioning terms which will help you to answer examination questions correctly. Also, the presentation is meant to uh, highlight some important difficult areas uh, in your uh, course. It is also uh, intended to present uh, key concepts students need to know. Um, for example, you may be required to uh, draw, you may be required to discuss, you may be required to calculate. All these terms will be explained. It is also intended to help you uh, on how you can cite examples when you are answering questions. Then the presentation also focuses on helping you to uh, analyze questions and decide on the length of the question based on the math allocation. Then um, the presentation also focuses on helping you how to uh, carry out uh, calculations. For example, when you are asked to convert to scale, uh, also when you are asked uh, to calculate and draw uh, accurately. Uh, then um, what are resources you need to consult when you are preparing for the examination? First resource, the major, the key resource is the start guide because it is all the topics which are covered in your course. Then you also need to consult a book uh, written by uh, Manas, uh, Shapalala, and Hess, uh, Go for Design and Technology, a grade 10 learner's book, um, published by Namibia Publishing House. Yes. Then you can also consult a book written by Garat J2004, Design and Technology. You can also look at your assignment questions and answers. Then you can also go on internet. Nevertheless, when you go on internet, you should avoid at all costs to copy and paste, but you should summarize. <clears throat> and now let's look at the uh, examination instructions. Uh, what are some of the important instructions which you need to know when you are writing an examination? First, it is important that you read and understand and follow all instructions to avoid disqualification. You need to complete personal information 
in full. You need to take equipment allowed in the examination. For example, you may not be allowed to take in your forms, so you should follow that. Uh, the exam uh, stipulates that if you are late by 30 minutes or more, you may not be allowed to sit for the examination. Uh, you are also not allowed to leave the examination during the first 30 minutes. You are not allowed to leave the exam room during the last 15 minutes. So these are a few uh, examination instructions. You need uh, to read all the instructions and understand them and also follow the instructions. Now let's look at the key questioning terms or words. Um, these ones, we need to know them so that when we are asked, we follow them correctly, we answer correctly. Um, we have uh, the following key questioning terms. We have define. What does it mean when a question says define? You need to give meaning. We also have describe. You need to give detailed features of something. Explain. You describe something to make it clear so that people can understand. Then we have got discuss, which is one of the most challenging key questioning terms, which most students fail to follow. If a question says discuss, you should give a detailed description, justifying, pointing at negative and positive features. Yes. In most cases, students explain when they are asked to discuss. And this may lead you to get very few points. Then the other um, questioning uh, term which gives students challenges is evaluate. What does it mean when a question says evaluate something? Yes, you determine the value, the worth, the quality of the concept or of that thing or the proposition or idea. So when you are asked to evaluate, you need to show the value. Then we also have distinguish it simply means showing the differences between two things. Yes. Right. Then we also have identify. You need to recognize by naming or a listing. Then we have illustrate. Uh, it means describing. Or you can illustrate through a drawing. Then we have calculate, that one is simple. You need to work out a numerical answer. For example, you may be asked to calculate the force, you may be asked to calculate the load. Then we have got examine. Uh, you look closely and determine the reasons, the value or the characteristics of something. Then we have compare and contrast. You need to show the similarities and the differences of something. And now let's focus on the quest, uh, the topics of this course. So I'm going to look at the uh, topics and summarize each topic. And then from each topic, it is from which the examination is set. The questions come from the topics. The first topic in our course is uh, conservation, um, conservation measures and the safety precautions. But what do we need to know under this topic? We need to know what is conservation. Mostly when we talk of conservation, we are looking at the natural resources. We are looking at water, trees, soil, and so forth. Yes. Then uh, we are also looking at um, uh, recycling, uh, reusing, 
And we have a, a very important concept uh, under this topic. We have what we call the four R's, um, which stand for reducing, reusing, recycling, and recovering. We are looking at waste. Then uh, we also have a concept on um, being a green consumer. Uh, it simply means saving or conservation of natural resources. We can also call it going green. Right? Um, we have conservation projects in Namibia. We need to know them. We need to know some of the examples of conservation projects in Namibia. Yes. Then under the same topic, we have emergencies and preparedness. Uh, we have things like... Um, uh, droughts, uh, we have got things like fires, uh, we need to prepare for this, right? Then um, we also need to know how to dispose materials in a safe and environmental safe way. And as teachers, we need to motivate learners to engage in conservation projects and the recycling activities. Uh, the second uh, main topic is design and design communications. Under this topic, we have um, a very important area on prototypes. We need to know what is a prototype and we also need to know the qualities uh, of a prototype. Um, then we also need to know what steps are followed when we are constructing or building a prototype. Then we also need to know areas of evaluation. When we are evaluating a prototype, what are we looking at? What qualities are we looking at? Uh, for example, correctness, uh, we're also looking at the quality, we need to know those. And then we also need to know uses of prototypes in real life situation. For example, they are used for demonstrations, they are used for research, and they are used for testing a new product. Then under the same topic, uh, design and design communication, we also need to know various ways of uh, presenting uh, drawings. Um, then let's focus on design communication. Uh, designing involves constructions and designs are a way of communicating. What does it mean? It means that a design tells you something, it communicates, you can discern information from a design. Then we also have this area uh, which uh, gives um, students some challenges, that is scale drawing. Uh, scale drawing is used to reduce the actual measurements. In other words, it means that when we are looking, for example, at a house, uh, the actual house, we can draw it on paper using scale. So we reduce the actual drawing using scale so that we can draw it on paper. So scale has to be done proportionally. Scale can be written as 1 to 100. Uh, it can also be written as 1 to 50 as a ratio. Or we can write it as a fraction. Right. Um, an example of a question on scale uh, is a house measures 50 meters by 30. Then you are asked to draw it to a scale of 1 to 500. Your scale drawing will be 100 millimeters by 60 millimeters or 10 centimeters by 6 meters. How do you get 
is illustrated here. You say 50 meters is equivalent to 50,000 millimeters. Then you divide it by the scale, which is 500. Then you get 100 millimeters and you convert to centimeters. It becomes 10 centimeters. You do the same with the width. That is 30 meters, you convert to millimeters, which is 30,000 millimeters. You divide by 500, you get 60 millimeters, and you convert to centimeters. When you draw uh, on the paper, for example, 10 centimeters length by 6 centimeters width, you need to be very, very accurate. That is one of the most important issues in design and technology. We need it to be accurate. If it is 10 centimeters, it needs to be 10 centimeters, and so on. <clears throat> what do we consider when designing a house? Um, when you are designing a house, there are important issues or key uh, factors you need to consider. Uh, so that your house is of quality, so that the house meets your expectations. You need to consider your budget because you need to ensure that you've got adequate uh, resources or money to complete the building. You need to check the reputation of the builder. Uh, so you need to trace or to uh, inquire about the trade, uh, you know, history of the, the builder. You also need to build the house uh, with resale in mind. It means that sometime you may decide to sell the house. And you also need to consider conservation, when we say you need to think green, uh, ways of conserving, saving, yes, you also need to have extra cash, uh, or we can call it contingent cash, in case the budget may balloon, or things may change, prices may change unexpectedly, so you need to have a contingent uh, budget uh, to meet unforeseen circumstances. And under the same topic, we also have 16 life uh, home designs. These are just qualities uh, of a home design. For example, you need to consider the car park. You cannot have a house without a car park. You also need to consider the approach to the home. How do you design the approach to the home? You also need to consider entrances. Uh, sometimes you can have single doors or you can also have double doors in case you may buy something which cannot go through the single door, then you can use a double door. Uh, so these are some of the uh, 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 home design consideration of factors you need to put in mind. Um, then when you are uh, teaching your students, uh, you also need to know effective questioning techniques. Um, for example, uh, it is discouraged that you give a question and you repeat the same question again before the student has, because you may be encouraging students not to listen. They will get to use that my teacher will always repeat. So effective questioning techniques, uh, you need to know them. Yes. Um, then let's look at the four types of stress. The first one is tension. If you look you can see that uh, tension is like pulling both sides. That is called the tension stretch. You look at the arrows there, you pull something, 
both sides. Then compression is the opposite of tension. You are pressing from both sides. You are compressing. You know, something becomes like a ball when you are compressing. Then we have got shear stress. Shear stress is like tearing or sliding. Uh, you can see the least illustration there. One block is going the opposite direction. That is shear stress. Then we have got also what we call torsion stress. Yes, this one is like twisting. I think uh, you have come across some twisted materials. For example, there are certain rods, metal rods, which are twisted. Yes, so you need to know this stress. You should be able to illustrate them, draw them, and you should also be able to describe or explain them. Right, then let's come to a very important area, electrical symbols. Yes, you should know this one in detail. Right, the first one, you can see that one is an open switch. Yes. Um, then we have the cell and then we have the battery. If you look at the cell and the battery, they are different. The cell is single, the battery is double. I, then the next one is a lamp. Uh, we can also call it uh, sometimes a globe. Uh, we have situations where some students may uh, confuse the lamp, the spelling. Instead of putting P, they put B. It becomes a lamp, which is not correct. But that one, you are now describing the young one of uh, a ship. That's, this one has got lamp with a P, then we've got a voltmeter, uh, then we've got an uh, ammeter, this one for measuring uh, a, a voltage, then we've got the resistor, um, then we've got the variable resistor, which has got an arc uh, going across, then we also the M for motor. So we need to know these electrical symbols, and we normally use them when we are illustrating circuits, electrical circuits. Right, let's look at the, an example of an electrical circuit. We have got a simple uh, electrical circuit. We have got only one battery. Um, then we have got a bulb, which I said we can also call it a globe, we can also call it a, a lamp. And then we have an open switch. Right, if we look at that circuit, um, you can see that uh, if we were to close the switch, the bubble would uh, go on. If we open it, it will go off. And then below, we can see an illustration of how to connect um, a simple electric circuit. Uh, the emphasis there is on the positive and the negative. If you look at the cell, the battery, the dry cell, you can see the plus, which stands for the positive. You can see the minus, which stands for the uh, negative. Then if you look at the, the connection, um, the plus of the battery to the plus of the globe or the bulb, then the minus, to the minus and then once you do that it becomes a full circuit then the bulb will light but if you exchange the negative and the positive it will not light so we can also have uh, what we call circuit in series whereby we may have more than one globe we have more than one cell then we have uh, you know, a number of these uh, batteries or globes in sort of a line. What is important is to connect correctly, considering the positive and the negative. Right. Now let's focus on materials. Under this topic, we have wood and metal. 
is material. Those are the major materials we have. So we need to know the types of wood. Then we also need to know the type of wood timber defects. Um, we need to know how to use uh, tools correctly, for example, how to use a saw correctly. How do you stand, how do you handle it? Uh, we also need to know safety precautions when we are using these tools. There may be manual tools, like a saw. We may also have uh, automated tools which run on uh, power electricity, uh, which may be even more uh, you know, uh, dangerous in terms of uh, safety pre precautions. So we need to know how to use these tools to avoid injury. Uh, then we also need to know ways of treating timber against different, you know, factors which may affect it. For example, whether, you know, the may, timber may be affected by insects. Uh, so we need to know how to treat it, the timber. And we also need to know different types of joints in woodwork. Yeah. Right, let's look at the second um, uh, material, which is metals. Uh, we need to know the properties of metals. For example, conductivity, that it can conduct electricity. Malleability, that uh, metal can be constructed into different shapes. We can destroy, we can reconstruct. All these properties, we need to know them. Then we also need to know precautions when we are using a hexo for cutting metal. Yes, we also need to know types of chisels. Then we have the screws, different types of screws. And here we are only showing four uh, types of screws. Um, they've got different names. For example, the first one is the pointed pannier. The second one is the blunt Paniered. Then the third one is the partial tapping round it, and the fourth one is self tapping round it. If you look at these names, you can see that these screws um, are named by shape, by appearance. So it is to remember them. For example, we are saying pointed, you can see that the screw is pointed. If you look at number four, you can see the threads there that they are self-tapping. Um, so you need you know, to master this technique of naming the screws. You look at the shape, look at the appearance, look at the head, is it square, is it rounded? You'll be able to master quickly how to name the screws. Um, then we have uh, topic on hydraulics. Um, if we need to understand hydraulics faster, we need to consider the uh, car jack, uh, what we use to lift a car. Let's say we have a puncher, then uh, we can also consider the uh, car brakes. Yes. And we can also consider the front loader. That one which, um, you know, loads uh, materials like in, t in, in lorries, the f uh, front loader. Right. We also need to know the advantages and disadvantages of uh, hydraulics. Right. Then related to hydraulics, we also have pneumatics. Uh, pneumatics used, uses compressed air to produce an output. Right. While uh, hydraulics uh, use some sort of liquid, uh, you know, to produce an output. Uh, those are the basic difference. They are more or less the same, but we have that uh, difference, right? Examples of pneumatics, we are looking at a pump. Um, we are looking at some doors of buses and trains. Then we also need to know the advantages and disadvantages of uh, pneumatics. If we look at these two, uh, if we look at the two, pneumatics and hydraulics, 
one of the advantages obviously is that the amount of work they can do if you look for example a car jack it can lift up a big lorry which may even be difficult to, to be lifted by 10 people so if you look at the work uh, that particular tool does you know it's an advantage um, um, then we have cells as source of electricity we have got solar cells which uh, consists of thin layers of silicon. Normally, when we talk of solar cells, we are reminded to think of the sun because we get solar uh, energy from the sun. But now, uh, when we want to use it, uh, we have to uh, have something to trap the solar from the sun. Um, then we've got primary cells. Uh, sometimes we can call them batteries or we can call them uh, dry cells. Yes, then we have got secondary cells um, like a uh, car, a battery, uh, which can be charged. Uh, once it is flat, it can be uh, uh, charged. While the primary cells, in most cases, when they um, um, there are no more, uh, you know, they cannot uh, be charged. You throw them when they are used up. Yes. Right, let's look at energy conversion. That is changing one form of energy to another. For example, we have got chemical or energy in batteries. Uh, then when you put it in a torch, then you switch on. It changes from chemical to light energy. Then uh, in a, on a guitar, uh, we have mechanical energy. When you play it, the mechanical energy is uh, converted to sound. Um, then in um, a microwave, uh, we have got light energy, which is converted to heat energy when you want to heat some, uh, to make some food warm. Uh, so we should know different energies and how they are converted. Yes, then uh, let's look at the balancing using the principle of moments. Uh, this one um, works on the principle of distance and load. But if you look at the illustration, on the left side we have a lot of 200 and then on the right side we would m load we don't know the load then the distance um, on from the load to the pivot we got three meters on the left side and five meters on the right side uh, so we need to calculate the value of m or uh, the weight of the smaller load. So what we need to do, we say 200, we multiply it by three, and then we divide by five, and then we'll get 120. And if you look at the two, 120 um, multiplied by five, we get 600. 200 multiplied by three, we get 600. So, the two will balance. So, on this one, we can remove, substitute, and any number, and calculate when we have the other three. So, any number can be substituted from uh, this um, uh, balancing or the principle of moments. Um, then... We have come to the end of the presentation. Then the conclusion. The presented topics areas do not may not cover the whole syllabus, but we have looked at the entire syllabus. We have not looked at all the details. So as a student, you need also to read and supplement the presentation. 
Yes. As I indicated from the beginning, at the beginning you need to consult various sources. You need to enrich yourself by consulting various sources. Uh, then you should always to answer questions as asked. If a question says discuss, you should discuss. If a question says distinguish, you should be able to show the differences. If it says compare and contrast, you should be able to show the differences and the similarities. Then you should also be guided by the marker location to decide the length of your answer. A question which carries uh, 10 marks and a question which carries 2 marks, they are not the same with regard to the length and the depth of the answer. The 2 mark question is shorter, while the 10 mark question may need more detail. Um, then, always, uh, if questions uh, ask you to support your answer with examples, you should give examples. For example, on the topic, the four errors, when we talk of recycling, when we talk of recovering or reusing, you should be able to give examples of materials which can be recycled. Um, we have come to the end of uh, the presentations. To all of you, best of luck for your exam. Thank you very much.